Hello everyone, uh, I would like to welcome you all for today's uh, class. We will briefly look at what we did last time uh, about the allyl silane based uh, chemistry. Uh, we looked at various aspects of allyl silane based reactions uh, which involve inter as well as intramolecular reactions. One of the first things that we, we talked in principle was that the formation of the beta carbocation uh, with respect to sil silicon uh, is stabilized and therefore wherever there is a possibility uh, the formation of the beta carbocation is uh, preferred. One of the things that we discussed was of course the deal sort of reaction of uh, this kind here that we took uh, this type of uh, diene containing uh, silicon moiety and then reacted with this dienophile. And what we saw was of course uh, formation of this kind of product with uh, endoselectivity. That means the stereochemistry of this carbon uh, silicon bond was the same as the sil uh, stereochemistry of this uh, uh, electron withdrawing group here of the dienophile. That means if this is alpha, so this is also alpha. And then when we reacted it uh, with uh, an electrophile like a proton or any other electrophile, then of course the double bond interacts with the electrophile in such a fashion that uh, the carbon electrophile bond formation occurs here to give this particular type of uh, uh, carbon E bond and of course the cation is uh, coming at the beta position with respect to silicon and again emphasizing on the fact that there is a beta silicon effect. So the regioselectivity of the double bond interacting with the electrophile was basically guided by the beta silicon effect. Now since this carbon silicon bond is alpha oriented, therefore the carbon electrophile bond becomes a beta oriented to avoid the steric interaction. Of course this kind of endoselectivity of this type is basically governed by the Diels order reactions rules. Then we also looked at the pile palladium complex based chemistry in which we took an example of this kind in which there is an allyl acetate moiety and allyl silane moiety embedded along with a uh, alpha beta unsaturated ester moiety. Now when palladium zero was uh, reacted with this we saw the formation of this bicyclic molecule. Uh, of course in this context we discussed in detail how this allyl acetate and allyl silane containing compound forms uh, a kind of 1,3 dipole which is basically guided by the formation of pi allyl palladium complex and of course the uh, uh, leaving group that comes out from here cleaves the carbon silicon bond to make an anion here and such a dipole then interacts with the alpha beta unsaturated system to allow a 2 plus 3 cyclo addition to form this kind of cyclopentane molecule. Finally, we also looked at the uh, intramolecular cyclization of an allyl silane under basic conditions in which tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride was taken as a nucleophile which interacts with the silicon making a silicon fluorine strong bond and generating an anion here which then allows cyclization in this particular fashion to occur. Here the driving force is of course the formation of a strong silicon fluorine bond. So uh, these are the things we discussed which is basically governing the um, uh, allyl silane based chemistry. Now um, we uh, look at it now uh, uh, what is the vinyl silane based chemistry. Now a vinyl silane based chemistry is uh, uh, very similar uh, in terms of the uh, uh, possibility of reacting with electrophile follows the same principle that we have been talking about it. Now if we see this vinyl silane 
to be written like this then when an electrophile reacts the electrophile could be expected to react either at this end of the double bond or can be expected to uh, react at this end of the double bond. Now um, if we compare it with what we did it last time uh, with the allyl cyane based chemistry we all the time said that electrophile attaches to this carbon atom uh, at the end so that the cation forms at the uh, in inner uh, carbon atom so that is basically beta to the silicon. So in this case if the electrophile attaches towards the N then you generate a cation which is alpha to the silicon which is not stabilized. But if it attaches onto the same carbon that means the electrophile attaches to the alpha carbon which holds the silicon group then we generate a positive charge on the beta carbon atom and therefore it can be stabilized due to the same kind of uh, uh, overlap as we have discussed that the sigma bond overlaps with the with the p orbital which is an empty p orbital it's kind of hyperconjugation as we have uh, discussed last time so it is very similar to uh, the stabilization of beta carbocation that we saw in the case of allyl silane. The only difference is that the electrophile attaches to the same carbon that holds the silicon group. So now if you look at it uh, very carefully uh, this intermediate here and react it with an electrophile such as uh, acetyl chloride in, uh, in the presence of aluminum chloride which is expected to give uh, an intermediate uh, of this type which is a very reactive intermediate. So we will have Cl, AlCl4 minus here and, and this can then react uh, with the uh, vinyl silane as we discussed the vinyl silane reacts uh, in such a way that the electrophile attaches to the same carbon that holds the silicon. So obviously we will get the um, attachment of the electrophile here and the carbocation comes here which is nothing but a beta carbocation. Then of course the silicon breaks off with the uh, from here with say for example when the nucleophile such as Cl minus takes the uh, silicon from here and you get the product as shown it here. Uh, in a similar fashion if we take the uh, other uh, vinyl silane of this kind uh, which is different from the top one and we expect that the attachment of the electrophile occurs onto the same carbon as uh, uh, this uh, silicon holding carbon and therefore we can get the product such as like this. Now uh, it is uh, 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 quite possible that the uh, if we try to rationalize it then vinyl silane additions uh, proceed uh, with uh, uh, retention of double bond configuration and follow a similar principle as that of allyl silane addition. Uh, what does it mean? It means that say for example if you have a vinyl silane like this so the addition of the electrophile uh, if it takes place from top or bottom phase of the double bond the silyl moiety like for example if you have this double bond with the silyl group here. Now silyl group here and A are trans to each other, the silyl group and B are cis to each other. So if the electrophile say for example attaches to the same carbon that holds the silicon so that the beta carbocation is formed and if it attacks from the bottom side for example here which we expect this intermediate to form and that will undergo slight rotation here in such a fashion that the silicon then will have an overlap that means the carbon silicon sigma bond will have an overlap with the MTP orbital here and then of course we will we'll get the double bond. But in this case as you can see there is a retention of double bond that means the silicon and the electrophile occupy the same position in the double bond. So the principle of least motion suggests that the electrophile moves into a position close to that formerly occupied by the silyl group. This is what is the uh, far formal um, uh, rule that says that there is a retention of double bond configuration. And uh, now uh, 
if we uh, say uh, take some examples where we can see such things hap happening is uh, for example if we take this where the R1 group and the silicon are trans to each other then of course we also get the uh, R1 and the electrophile coming also in a trans fashion. So now if we take a double bond like this where silicon and the phenyl group are trans to each other we add deuterium chloride to it and we expect that the deuterium chloride for example uh, attacks from the top side uh, and if we write if with the orbitals being like this then if the deuterium attacks from the top then we get uh, to uh, see such a carbocation intermediate and um, this carbocation intermediate now will uh, undergo rotation here in such a fashion that the carbon silicon bond goes down uh, that is the least uh, uh, motion that we can expect to uh, uh, see in this case that is what is energetically favorable and it goes down and if that happens then deuterium comes into this position and now your nucleophile attacks uh, you have a beta carbocation the carbon silicon bond breaks with the help of the nucleophile and of course this bond breaks and we get this uh, product in which the deuterium is now occupying the same uh, position as the silicon. So uh, we have to make sure that the carbon silicon bond uh, lies in the plane of the p orbital that is why we have rotated it in this fashion. So stereospecificity is attributed to a bridging interaction between the silicon atom and the 2 pz orbital of the adjacent carbocation as, as shown it here. So this is how the vinyl silanes react and we get the uh, product in which the silicon group gets replaced by the electrophile. Now we have uh, very interesting examples of what is known as uh, Nazaro cyclization or dienone cyclization. In these cases the regioselectivity is very important. Now what is uh, Nazaro cyclization or a dienone cyclization? As you can see it here if we have a dienone which is a conjugated this is meant there is a diene and of course there is a ketone which is conjugated and when this undergoes uh, cyclization in the presence of an acid could be a protic acid or a Lewis acid then one can expect to get a, a product of this kind here. So uh, basically what is happening is uh, something of this sort happens and then you get an intermediate of this kind here like this. Um, and uh, get a positive charge here and of course you uh, then get the enone by the loss of this proton here. So this is what is called as a Nazarov cyclization or dienone cyclization. So how do you make this dienone? You can uh, react the acyl, uh, acyl chloride with vinyl silane. So as we discussed that the vinyl silane react with an electrophile in this case the electrophile is going to be uh, this uh, particular uh, carbo, uh, car, can positively charged species and uh, you have here essential 4. So we write here the uh, nucleophile being this is the electrophile that is going to be there and of course um, uh, the vinyl silane reacts and the uh, carbon silicon bond is replaced by the electrophile and that is what is happening. So this carbon gets attached to the um, this electrophilic part and we get this intermediate. Now this intermediate is uh, not a symmetrical intermediate as, as we have seen it here. This is a symmetrical molecule therefore it does not matter whether double bond comes in this direction or double bond comes in this direction. But this is not a symmetrical uh, dienone and therefore when this is treated with, with continues to treat with keep to be treated with essential 4 then of course essential 4 will react uh, uh, to the oxygen here uh, and you have uh, an electrophilic oxygen and then double bond here. Now what can happen there are two possibilities that can that can happen to this intermediate either you get um, uh, the movement of the uh, double bond being uh, in this way uh, so that that gives uh, um, uh, product of 
this kind here, let us put M here and the positive charge being here. And then this loses a proton, then of course we get a product of this type. Now this is what is, is, is seen and uh, it is not seen in the other way around or the major product is this. The other possibility is that this intermediate also we can write it in this fashion um, where the electrophile can react in this fashion here Cl4 minus and positive charge here and now double bond could move uh, in this way that and of course we can expect the uh, product formation to be like this OM if we say then we have uh, a positive charge being here and that leads to the formation of double bond being here. So this product is different and this product is different but this product is uh, having a double bond which is more substituted and therefore this is thermodynamically more stable and that is the reason why this particular product has formed. In a similar fashion if we tie and take uh, uh, the um, uh, molecule like this in which uh, now we see that uh, what we have is an inbuilt uh, silicon uh, vinyl silane uh, in, uh, into the dienone. So as one can expect that when the proton reacts with it, the protonation occurs it here and then if you get a positive charge on the oxygen. Now this particular positive charge can um, uh, allow the double bond to move in this fashion uh, as one would expect that allows the formation of the positive charge. Once the double bond moves, then you get this particular intermediate. Now this is the beta and this is the alpha and now this uh, neutralization of the positive charge occurs and you get this as the exclusive product. What is the other possibility? The other possibility as we can anticipate but it does not happen uh, is that once this um, species is formed, uh, it can undergo uh, cyclization in this fashion and then what generates is, is uh, SIR3 and uh, you generate an OH here and a positive charge here. Now in both the cases here the positive charge is stabilized as an allyl cation as well as by the silicon beta effect but in this particular case it is only allyl and of course it is a tertiary. Uh, in this case it is secondary but then silicon positive effect uh, beta, beta uh, stabilization of the cation at the beta position by carbon silicon bond is, is more uh, important and therefore you get this particular intermediate and not this does not form this intermediate what we, we would expect it to form. So which is, which is very different from what we saw in the previous case. Uh, now uh, there are some other examples in which the beta effect of the silicon can be seen and uh, that involves uh, like a protonation of an imine also uh, like, like this here and this protonation can occur at this position here uh, and uh, what it happens is it allows the, uh, the uh, intermediate uh, to form in such a way that one can X write down the conformation of uh, this particular intermediate and we can say that say you have a silicon here and uh, you have uh, a possibility of positively charged imine and to be written like this and of course you have a uh, pH here like this and uh, then what happens is of course you um, can uh, allow the reaction of the vinyl silane. Now you have 1, 2, 3, 4 and of course 5 here and this is the 6 carbon where the attack takes place and that leads to the formation of the product than one would expect and that product we can write it in this way. Now we have here phenyl 
and of course you have a hydrogen here and then you have cation which is beta to the here. So this is the place where the, the cation is formed. The nucleophilic reaction takes place onto the carbon where the silicon is attached and therefore this hydrogen of course is pointing upward and therefore this is the beta configuration, phenyl is anyway pointing upward so it is beta configuration. So this is how the product forms. So uh, now uh, what we have the next is the coupling reaction of, uh, of this type of intermediate another example in which you can see that you have a vinyl silane and when this is treated with the formaldehyde in the presence of camphor sulfonic acid which is a protic acid and which looks like this, uh, this is the uh, camphor sulfonic acid uh, and this is uh, a, a good acid to protonate the, uh, the, the formaldehyde and how the reaction occurs is that you have uh, here the NH uh, which is now having a lone pair of electron and then you have a methyl group here, then you have an OH group here and here you have silicon and let us say you have R3 and whatever the group is attached to here we write is as R say 1 here. So three groups are attached to silicon and this. Now this reacts with uh, a formaldehyde and uh, uh, formaldehyde reacts in the presence of H plus and uh, it the, the nucleophile of the nitrogen attaches to the carbon atom forming uh, an intermediate uh, of this kind here and uh, then you can expect that silicon is here and you have the substituent R1 here. Now in this case here is methyl group. I will write it again and methyl group here. Now this again under the protic condition loses the proton the OH group upon protonation and that forms the intermediate of this kind here and then what you have is, is uh, a silicon which uh, then reacts in a similar fashion as we have discussed earlier. R3 is this reacts in this way and positive charge is saturated and here of course we have methyl and the OH here. here. And that cyclization allows the formation of the uh, product to take place in this fashion. So once the carbon carbon bond is formed, the uh, the uh, double bond forms uh, through the beta carbocation. Now uh, this kind of beta carbocation effect is also not uh, not every time uh, uh, successful. Sometimes it can be you know, overridden because it is a relatively weak effect. For example, if you take a substrate of this kind where we expect that uh, the uh, carbon atom that holds the silicon attaches to the electrophile in the presence of a Lewis acid then one can expect something like this to happen say if you have a, a M X N as a Lewis acid. <coughs> but then as you can see here that you have formed a primary cation although it is beta to the silicon but it is a primary cation and therefore formation of this after the loss of uh, carbon silicon bond does not happen. What happens actually is that once the uh, Lewis acid like aluminum chloride reacts with it then the beta position that is not the carbon holding silicon but the next carbon attached in this fashion here in this way forming a 6 member ring that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 member ring and now it is an alpha uh, uh, carbocation next to the silicon but which we now say that it is not stable and therefore since it is not stable it immediately undergoes a 1 2 hydride shift and forms a tertiary cation here. Now this tertiary cation as you can see 
is not only tertiary cation but is also now beta. This is alpha and this is beta. Here it is beta to the carbon silicon bond and therefore now it has a double stabilization and then now the loss of silicon carbon bond occurs and this product is formed. So this is a, a very interesting example where the beta effect of the silicon can be over, overridden. So uh, we will uh, stop it at this stage um, and uh, take up the remaining part of the silicon based chemistry next time. Till then you can read more aspects of the valence silane based chemistry and uh, we will discuss about it uh, in the next class. Thank you and take care, bye.